Well, good morning. It is Tuesday, February the 22nd, 2022. A lot of twos today. Tuesday, second month, 22nd day, 2022. A lot of twos today. Hope you're well. Hope you guys slept well. Um, hope you got a good day planned. There's Connie and Robin and Kim. Good to see you all. All right, there's my sister Glenna. I want to do three chapters this morning. They're pretty short, so let's go ahead and have a word of prayer, and then we'll get started. Um, hi, Connie. Hey, Wilma. Let's let's uh, let's lift up this whole situation this morning in the Ukraine and Russia, and um, it's got a weird vibe. Um, we definitely need to be praying that peace. The peace would be top priority right now. Um, we serve a God of peace. Um, so we need to, uh, the, the Bible calls Jesus the Prince of Peace. So let's have a word of prayer and then we'll get started. Hey Kim, Rosemary, Diane, my mom, Shirley, Patty, Connie, Wilma. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this morning, Lord. We just want to lift up our time together. Pray, Lord, that we would be good stewards of your word, that you would let us see from it today the things that you would have us to see and internalize that. Let it soak into our hearts and lives and let it change us. Let's make it, let it, let it make us more like your son, Jesus, our Lord. Um, we will lift up this situation, Lord, in the Ukraine. Lord, uh, nobody likes war. We don't want that. Lord, we just pray that you would uh, calm the nerves and the spirits of the people that are involved, the leaders, and that you would um, that you would protect our country, that you would protect uh, the people on the field there, uh, all the Americans that are there helping. That you would just um, that you would just do the thing that you do, Lord. Nothing sifts through your fingers without you knowing about it. So Lord, we just want to lift them up to you this morning, Lord. We. Um, you want peace. You don't. You don't want anyone to die. So, Lord, we just pray that you would do what you do. Lord, we love you, and we ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. So let's jump in and get rolling. There's Kim. Yeah. Absolutely. Praying for the Ukraine. A challenge to you this morning, in this day of twos. Think about before you leave for work this morning, on a little note card or a little piece of paper or something. Write down two things that you are thankful for. Two things on this day of twos. Two things that you are grateful for. Okay? And there's a reason for this. Here we go. Psalm 92. First one says, verse 1 says, It is good to give thanks to the Lord. Okay? It is. It's good. There's a direct connection between worship and gratitude. All right? Enter into your gates with thanksgiving the bible says it says and gives praises to your name O most high to declare your loving kindness your mercy in the morning and your faithfulness by night that's what we're doing this morning right we're declaring his loving kindness today this morning his mercy it says with a thick with a tin stringed lute and with the harp with resounding music upon the lyre for you, O Lord, have made me glad by what you have done. I will sing for joy at the works of your hands. Comes back to how often do we spend time getting beat up by this world for all the negative that's going on. And we forget, I'm public enemy number one on this. But we don't take time to meditate and think about all the things that we have to be grateful for. The writer here of this psalm, which is entitled "A Psalm for the Sabbath," a song for the Sabbath day. The writer is saying, "For you, O Lord, have made me glad by what you have done." Think about what the Lord has done for you. Okay, I promise your day will be better when we think about and meditate on the things for which we are grateful. Okay, how great are your works? Verse five, O Lord. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man has no knowledge, nor does a stupid man understand this. 
Then when the wicked sprouted up like grass, and all who did iniquity flourished, it was only that they may be destroyed forever. But you, O Lord, are on high forever. For behold your enemies, O Lord. For behold, your enemies will perish. All who do iniquity will be scattered. I love that verse. How great are your works, O Lord. Your thoughts are very deep. Aren't you thankful that we serve a God whose ways are far above our ways? There are things that happen in this world. There are things that happen to us that we do not understand. Okay? We're not supposed to. We're people. But we serve a God who loves us and who knows what's best for us and who will do what he needs to do to put his plan into place. And we're a part of that, okay? It says a senseless man has no knowledge, okay? Verse 10, but you have exalted my horn like that of the wild ox. I've been anointed with fresh oil and my eye has looked exultantly upon my foes. My ears hear of the evildoers who rise up against me. The righteous man will flourish like the palm tree. He will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. What, is that? what does that mean? They floated cedars down uh, the river from Lebanon to Jerusalem to build the temple. Okay? Strong, strong wood. Okay? It's just planted in the house of the Lord. That's what it means there. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still yield fruit in old age. They shall be full of sap and very green to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. All right, so the righteous man is what the, the author is telling us here, will flourish like a palm tree, like a cedar that's planted in the house of the Lord. They're going to yield fruit in the old age. They're going to be full of sap and green. Excuse me. To declare that the Lord is upright. The, the righteous are preserved for God and for his purposes. Okay, full of sap, very green, full of life to declare that the Lord is upright. And then the author stop, stops at the very end and says, he is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him, in the Lord. There is none. God is holy. He is perfect. He is just. There is no, there is no flaws in him. There are no, um, there are no, uh, no stains on him. He is perfect. All right? And we know that Jesus was perfect because Jesus was God. Jesus lived a perfect life. He lived a life we could never live. He endured a punishment that we deserved. Why? To satisfy God's wrath. Because remember, every sin requires a payment. Every sin that you and I have ever committed requires it to be paid for. The question is, how will you repay it? Number one, you can't, okay? The only one who can is the one who never sinned, the perfect Lamb of God, right? Psalm 93, the Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord has clothed and girded himself with strength. Indeed, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. Your throne is establishing from, un, from, from of old. You are from everlasting. Okay, we've seen that phrase already today. He is before time. There's never been a time. God does not have a birthday. All of us, we have a beginning, right? The day we were brought into this world, we have a life, however long it is, and we have an end date, all right, where we will cease to exist here in this world, but we will live forever somewhere. Okay, the question is where? But God has no beginning, and he has no end. He is from everlasting, the Bible tells us here. Verse 3, the floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their pounding waves, more than the sounds of many waters, than the mighty breakers of the sea. This image of the seas is one of power, majesty. You ever look at the ocean? goes on forever okay you can't you can't see the other side that's how god is he's, he's majestic and powerful 
says, your testimonies are highly confirmed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. Holiness befits your house. What does that mean? You and I, as children of God, if you know Christ as your Lord and Savior, holiness is what is demanded of us. Holiness is what is required of us. The Bible says, be holy because I am holy, God says. Okay? Now, you and I can't do that in our own power. It's only done through the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit, we know what those are, right? The fruit of the Spirit. Those come. Those come when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. You, as a follower of Christ, as a child of God, you have everything you need. I'll let that sit for a second. You have everything you need to live a Christ-filled, fulfilled, purposeful life. You're not lacking anything. When the Holy Spirit came to reside within you, you became the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so you have everything you need. But what's required of us? What's an option for us? Is holiness. Okay? If we opt... If we do not, here's the thing, if we do not live holy lives as believers, we're choosing not to. Okay? We're choosing not to. Because we have everything we need. What are we going to do with it? Okay? All right. Psalm 94. O Lord God of vengeance. Now, it's going to shift here. There's a different tone here. There's more of a, the old school psalm feel here, what we've, what we've seen in the past. O Lord God of vengeance, God of vengeance, shine forth. Rise up, O judge of the earth. Render recompense to the proud. And then he asks some questions. How long shall the wicked, O Lord? How long shall the wicked exult? They pour forth words. They speak arrogantly. All who do wickedness vaunt themselves. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the orphans. They have said, the Lord does not see, nor does the God of Jacob pay heed. So the writer is saying, these people who do evil, they're like, God doesn't see this. This God pays no attention to this. That's not true, right? It's not true. Verse 8, pay heed, you senseless among the people. And when will you understand, stupid ones? Okay, that's pretty hardcore. He who planted the ear, does he not hear? He who formed the eye, does he not see? He who chastens the nations, will he not rebuke? All of that is true. It says, even he who teaches man knowledge, the Lord knows the thoughts of man, yes, that they are but a mere breath. Blessed is the man whom you chasten, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law, that you may grant him relief from the days of adversary, from adversity, sorry, until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord, hold on to this, for the Lord will not abandon his people, nor will he forsake his inheritance. For judgment will be again be righteous, and all the upright in heart will follow it. Who will stand up for me against evildoers? Who will take his stand for me against those who do wickedness? There's rhetorical questions. It's God, obviously. Verse 17, if the Lord had not been my help, my soul would soon have dwelt in the abode of silence. If I should say my foot has slipped, your loving kindness, your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. When my anxious thoughts, okay, some of you struggle with worry and anxiety. I worry some. When my anxious thoughts multiply again within me, look at this, your consolations delight my soul. Can a throne of destruction be allied with you? One who devises mischief by decree? They band themselves together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has been my stronghold and my God, the rock of my, of my refuge. He has brought back their wickedness upon them and will destroy them in their evil. The Lord, our God, will destroy them. Verse 11, let's review real quick. The Lord knows the thoughts of man. He knows what we think. He teaches us, verse 12, out of the law. Okay? The Lord will not, verse 14, abandon his people. He will not forsake his inheritance. We are his inheritance. If the Lord had not been my help, the writer says in verse 17, 
my soul would have dwelt in the abode of silence. He says, when my anxious, uh, probably the thing that I'm grabbing most out of this last chapter is verse 19. When my anxious thoughts multiply within me, and they grow, don't they? They grow. I'm worried about this. I'm fretting about that. Anxious, anxiety. He says, your consolations delight my soul. Carry that with you today. God is good. He loves you. He wants good for you. He wants to know you. And he wants you to know him. Have you given your heart to him? Is he your Lord? I hope so. If not, reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you more about that. Okay, remember as we leave, two things to, on this day of twos. 2 22, 22. Two things that you are thankful for and grateful for today. All right, let's see who else joined us since I started yapping here. There's LaDonna. All right, I love you all. Let's pray, and then we'll be started with our day. Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, be with us today. Walk with us. Talk with us. Guide us. We know you'll never forsake your people. Lord, we know when those worries and anxieties begin to multiply within us, we know that your consolations delight our souls. Lord, we love you. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, y'all. Have a great day. Love you. And uh, hey, Barry, Barry Hubbard. Good to see you, Barry. All right, y'all. Have a good day. Love you all. See you tomorrow. We'll be in probably Psalm 95, 96. We might, yeah, Psalm 95, 96 tomorrow. All right. See y'all.